As I mentioned earlier in the show, Argentina's president, Javier Millet, has been warning of the decline of the West at the World Economic Forum at the hands of social justice and collectivism. Of course, no one there was listening and he knew it, but gosh, it's encouraged the rest of us. Sky News contributor Dr. Rocco Loyacono joins me now. Rocco, you've been following the WEF in Davos this week. Do you think Malay will be invited back next year after his 23-minute speech, reducing the lot of them to a grease spot on the carpet? Yeah. Good evening, Liz. Look, um, I'm not sure whether he really cares whether he's invited back again. I mean, he dropped some truth bombs for the uh, Davos dialects, didn't he? Um, and I think, like you said in the introduction, it was a message to the world at large and he would have been knowing that the world was watching. And the message is, look, if we don't uh, do something, uh, we're going to wind up like Argentina. We're going to suffer the same fate as Argentina, um, which uh, is a bit like the alcoholic who has to hit rock bottom uh, before he realises that there's a problem and that there's only one solution. If anyone I hope was listening, it was people in the Liberal Party here in Australia. Oh, if only. <laughs> Malay is very global in his outlook. He's known for that. But what's your take in terms of the international arena? Do you think they're receptive to him? Obviously not in the WEF, but how is he seen as a crackpot or as an absolute legend? Obviously those of our ilk would say the latter, but what's been said in your world? How do people see this guy? Look, I, I, from talking to my cousins in Argentina, um, look, their, their, their only concern, and I think Malay's only concern, is to ensure that he does the job for them to pull Argentina out of the mire that it is in and give it the prescription that it needs. Uh, look, within in terms of international politics, I mean, within days of him assuming the presidency, uh, he told the Chinese to stick their Belt and Road Initiative, which is the biggest <laughs> in all of the Americas, where they could fit it. Um, so uh, the, the focus is on getting the job done. A bit like Georgia Meloni, I mean, remember, Remember when she was elected Prime Minister, the, there were the meltdowns from the left and she was a fascist and the sky was going to fall in. Um, but look, the, uh, the, she's been focused on the job. The ratings agencies have given her a big tick. The polls are better for her than they were when she was elected. And I think, uh, Milani, uh, I think Javier Malay will do uh, exactly the same thing. Absolutely. And now we've got Gert Wilders in the Netherlands. We just seem to be collecting these incredible leaders who, quite frankly, don't care how they're perceived on the world stage because that is the definition of a true leader. They're just getting the job done for their own country. Now, conservative bishops say they will boycott the Vatican's decision to allow the blessing of same-sex couples, with Pope Francis saying he feels lonely and isolated since he made the announcement. Rocco, maybe if the Pope read his Bible, he'd understand <laughs> where these true bishops are coming from. Scripture is scathingly clear on this issue. Yes, look, uh, I mean, Pope's of living memory like John Paul II and Benedict XVI um, had a wonderful knowledge of the scriptures and Benedict XVI was a wonderful theologian, probably the greatest of all time. Uh, so uh, Pope Francis isn't as learned as them, but uh, what he lacks in learning, he makes up for in scheming, which means he surrounds himself uh, with his mates who are mired in sexual and financial scandal, like uh, the now head of the Congregation of the Doctrinage of the Faith, Fernandez, Theodore McCarrick and Archbishop Mara Diaga. Um, and let's not forget that uh, he's abandoned uh, 70 million Catholics in China by cozying up to the Communist Party. Um, so instead of having, as John Paul II and Benedict XVI had, 90% of the church on his side, he's got 85 to 90% of the church against him because he's upset the Africans, the Asians, the South Americans and the Western bishops, uh, the Western conservatives. So is it any wonder that he's feeling lonely and isolated?